Welcome to iLecture Online, and here's another example of how to do word problems using two variables in algebra. And let's read the problem. It says Carl invested some money at 7% and some at 8%. He invested $6,000 more at 8% than at 7%. His yearly interest earned is $780. How much was invested at each rate? And just like all these types of problems with two variables, let's define very carefully what each variable represents. So let x equal the amount invested at 7% and then let y equal the amount invested at 8%. Now you may feel, wow, why do I bother why you want to write all this stuff out, it's a very important step, so I'd say do not skip that. So, since you have two variables, now you need two equations so you can solve this problem. And we look through the problem to try and figure out what, um, what we might use here. It says that we invested $6,000 more at 8% than at 7%. And since y is the amount invested at 8%, we can then say that y, which is the amount invested at 8%, which is $6,000 more than what was invested at 7%, which is x, we can say that y is equal to 6,000 plus x, which means whatever we invested at x, at 6,000 more, and that's what we invested at y, and y is the amount invested at 8%. So that captures that information right there. In addition to that, it says that the yearly interest earned was $780, which means that the interest earned, interest earned at 7% plus the interest earned at 8% must add up to $780. The reason why I write this out is because we sent, we're usually tempted to try and write the equation down right away, and then sometimes we make mistakes when we do that. So I'd rather just write it out in English to simply say interest earned at 7% plus the interest earned at 8% equals the interest that I've earned total for the year, and then I can go back and figure out how I will express mathematically the interest earned at 7%. Well, the way you express the interest earned at 7% is you take the amount invested at 7% and multiply that times the interest rate. So the amount invested at 7% is x, so x, which is the amount invested at 7%, times the interest rate, which is 0 0.07, we can convert to a decimal. That's the amount of interest earned at 7%, plus the amount invested at 8%, which is y, times the rate, which is 0 0.08, that's the amount we invested, or that's the interest earned at 8%, and the two combined must add up to 780. So now I have two equations. I have equation number one, and I have equation number two, and I can solve those simultaneously to find the answer. Before I do anything with equation number two, I would like to get rid of the decimal places. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 100, times 100, times 100, to get rid of those decimal places. So we can then say that uh, 100 times 0.07 is 7, so 7x plus, and 100 times 0.08 is 8, so plus 8y equals this with two more zeros, 78000. So now I have actually a better form of equation number two, and I have a form of equation number one, so I can solve those two equations simultaneously now. Now, a good method here would be to solve the, to use the substitution method because this is already expressed as y in terms of x. So if I take this value for y and plug it into here, I can then eliminate the variable y and only have one variable with one equation. So my equation number two now becomes 7x plus 8 times, instead of writing y, we're going to write what y is equal to, which is 6,000 plus x and that equals 7, oh, 78,000. So now I get rid of the parentheses by multiplying this through. So we have 7x plus 8 times 6,000 is 48,000 
plus 8x equals 78,000. I need to move to the other side of the board because I'm running out of room here. So let's move over here. Okay, I'm going to leave all the x's on one side, put all the numbers on the other side. So on the left side, I end up with a 7x plus 8x equals, on the right side, I already have 78,000. And then when I bring the 48,000 across, the equal sign that becomes a minus 48,000. And then I can combine like terms. So 7x plus 8x is 15x. And 78,000 minus 48,000 is 30,000. And then finally, I divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient in front of x. Divide by 15, divide by 15. So x is equal to 2,000. There we go. Now, what does x represent? Good thing I wrote the exact definitions down. x represented the amount invested at 2%, which means that I invest $2,000 at 7%. And since y, which is the amount invested at 8%, is $6,000 more, this is therefore equal to 6,000 plus 2,000, which is 8,000. And so I can say that I invested 8,000 at 8%. Now, how do I know I got this right? There's a way that I can check. I can then say, okay, I'm going to check here, draw a little box. Let's check our answer here. If I invested $2,000 at 7%, how much did I earn? Well, the interest at 7% is equal to the amount that I invested at 7%, which is $2,000, multiplied times the rate, which is 0 0.07. So that is equal to $140 earned with the money that I invested at 7%, and then the interest earned at 8% is equal to the amount that I invested at 8%, which is $8,000, times the rate of 0.08 which is equal to 8 times 8, that's $640. And they add up to $780. And is that the same as what I have in the problem? And the answer is yes, it's the same amount. So I just checked, made sure that I got the problem right. So a quick recap. You have a problem that you need to solve using two variables. So you first define your two variables very carefully. Then you need two equations. You go through the problem and you find information. And it says here that the person invested $6,000 more at 8% than at 7%. So we write that equation down here. Y, which is the amount invested at 8%, is $6,000 more than what we invested at 7%. So that's our first equation. Second equation, we find that the total interest earned is $780. So we go back and say the interest earned at 7% plus the interest earned at 8% equals $780. Notice that it's not the mathematical equation yet. You write it out so it makes more sense. Then you mathematically represent how much is earned at 7%, how much is earned at 8%. It's simply the amount invested times the rate plus the amount invested times the rate. Now you have two equations and two unknowns that you can solve simultaneously. And that's how you do those problems. Let me see if I can come up with some additional examples.